Hello and welcome to Scientifically Reacting to Theoria Apophasis' new video called Black Hole Secret, I Told You So. So we're going to be reacting to Ken Wheeler uh, with his assertion that this picture on screen is the same as the black hole that he's about to show because he told you so. Now, before we go on, um, I'm going to give you Ken Wheeler, a.k.a. Theoria Apophasis, I'm going to give you his... Um, take on what this pattern is. Now you see, Ken believes in a reciprocating magnet. That means he believes that on, say, the north side of the magnet, everything from this black hole is spinning out in a clockwise direction. Okay? So all the lines on here are clockwise. He says also that on the south face, there is a counterclockwise, and that's what we see on the top because it reciprocates. The north goes down and the south is coming up in the opposite direction because obviously we have counterclockwise and clockwise. He's saying that the clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't matter, it's just for rotation purposes. He says that there's clockwise on the top, counterclockwise on the bottom, and because they reciprocate into this hole, that's why you get two patterns. So remember, he believes that this is both sides of the magnet. I don't. What's happening here, you see, on, uh, on a magnet, um, the north field will lock into the south field um, at the inertial line. The north field has two fields, a north field and a south field, because it's a double helix. So one is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. So the south field on here, that's what all of this is. And it's coming from this edge. It's actually coming in because this is actually a great big dome like a conical hat i've shown that well i'll show you in a minute so let's just try and put this in perspective i say that the actual if this was a north face the north field would be going from the center out to the left and out to the right and meeting at the inertia line with the south field the south field on this north side is coming from the edge in. So we can't actually see the north field here. This is the south field repelled from the south field that has met the north field out the middle. So we've got south field on the bottom. We also have south field on the top. And this is being rejected by the south field because it's a south field into the center. But this actually spirals upwards. So this is not a flat picture. This is spiraling towards us. Okay, so now we understand that. Anything going clockwise here is south for Ken Wheeler, and anything uh, coming the other way is the north field. So he says that this is both fields on one side of a magnet, and he said it hundreds of times in his video. I say this picture is everything coming in. All right, so let's, now that we've got that, let's see what Ken's got to say. Well, scientists in just the past couple days or couple weeks discovered that the M87 black hole, by using a, a polarizing filter and uh, deep space imaging of the black hole, they discovered something to them was shocking. However, I'll make note of the fact that I've been saying this for years, and I've made at least like a dozen videos about black holes. Now, these are not black holes, but they're kind of a perfect uh, micro analogy. And I'll show you the image of... Uh... I've speeded it up. Which I told you it would look like this years and years ago. Anyway, these are magnets underneath the supercell. Right at the center here, of course, we see this black spot of dotic. So he said, this is what it is years ago. Of course, the magnetic geometry is that of a torus or a donut shape. Here you can see the donut shape, the toroidal geometry of the magnetic field around the magnet here on the right, and the same here on the left. The reason why this black hole, literally, um, on this magnet is so large is because it's incredibly powerful. It's actually an N58 Gauss neodymium iron boron. And what people don't understand about a magnet is what defines a magnet is not magnetism. Well, that's partially true, but the magnetodielectric, which is an inseparable con... As we can see, he's gone into his hamster wheeling nonsense about counter space. I would put up a picture of a kitchen countertop for counter space, but somebody's already done that joke. So, if only we could get through the nonsense. To get geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, the more powerful a magnet becomes, the smaller the spatial magnetic field. That's why this hole is so huge. See, no, it's not. You see, it becomes very tiny. It's now flat to the magnet. So what we're looking at on screen, this and this, is the opposite field that is in repulsion to the bottom field. This is not the magnetic field. This is the repulsive field because it's coming from the edges. 
and it's been pushed up by the south field on the bottom around this very powerful magnet underneath the supercell and of course you see these interlacing vortex patterns um navigating themselves interlacing vortex patterns remember he doesn't believe that these are on one side he believes that this is both sides of the magnet on a reciprocating magnet showing up on both sides so this is both fields top and bottom on one, one magnet is what he believes around uh, towards uh, the plane of inertia the zero point if you will at the center of the magnet where nothing is literally counter space it's not counter space <laughs> we have uh, the conjugate geometry of force of motion inertia and acceleration i'm getting very quickly here to the image that they produced the black hole using uh, polarization to show the pattern there and it's exactly what i've been telling you for years so he's saying it's this picture this picture of left and right clockwise and counterclockwise rotations so he's about to prove that this is the same as the black hole 100 percent exactly and here it is yes there okay so one we do not have an interlacing pattern that's all I'm going to say for now, because now we're going to prove my theory by what we can see. Here we see it. Right there. The vortex patterns of the magnetized plasma. Here are the case we don't... Really? You think it looks like that? I'm afraid it doesn't. So you'll stop trying to gaslit people into saying that you said this is what it would look like. You're talking nonsense, Mr. Wheeler, because this picture doesn't look anything like this picture. And I've just explained why. This is the north... Uh, this is the... On top of a north, this is the south field that is in on top of a north that is being repelled by the south field on the bottom. So this isn't the picture of the actual north face magnetic field. This is the south face magnetic field on the north field. The north field is flat to the magnet, as he just explained, that the spatial footprint is smaller, the stronger the magnet is. So this is above a magnet. This is not on the magnet. The real magnetization is on the magnet. This is raised up because it's repulsed by the south field on the bottom, and this is the south field that is on the north face. There we see it, right there. The vortex patterns of the magnetized plasma. Here are the case we don't actually have a cross patch. No, we don't, do we? And I'm about to say there's a halo wave there. I can see a halo wave, and it goes out clockwise, and it goes out counterclockwise. We're talking scale, and I've said that many things that I've explained can be seen at different scales of reality. This is the same as a sunspot. This is exactly what a sunspot looks like. We've got the heart shape here. All these are the clockwise strands, and then here we have a rounded lump because it has to spin around to the other side, and it's going this way. So this is actually coming this way this is coming this way and this is where i say they link which i've shown in smoke videos all right so halo wave starts in the middle and comes out and comes out so this is one of the fields because it's going both ways but it's a, it's so large that you're seeing the main halo wave this on the right of course is the other side this is the repulsed field that is on top this is the true field, kind of. I mean, it's a stupid picture, and I don't believe a second of it. But it confirms that this side spins out to here, and this side comes around to meet it to this spot right here. This is nothing like this. This is a halo wave. This is a repulsed field. A pattern, cross-hatch pattern, of the magnetodielectric like we do here, because a black hole is a supra-dielectric phenomenon. It Whatever that means. As far as I'm concerned, there could be a mass there, a very small mass, as he says, with a great big magnitude. But, I mean, obviously him saying that the crosshatch pattern is there, it, it's obviously not. And what I've said about a halo wave starting at the top like a heart and coming round and coming round is right there. You can see by the lines. And they meet here, which is what happens with a smoke ring. If you dab a cigarette that's lit, it will give off a smoke ring and it will curl around in a halo wave and make a halo. But right here, this is where they meet and then they have to twist in a different direction. Literally is a supermass with no magnitude. We have no parallel. So, as I said, there could be a mass there, but imagine two faucets, two hose pipes facing each other and forcing into each other. So you would end up with two toruses. Two toruses of water, two jets forced together would create two pancakes that are there. They would both have two fields on each side, always clockwise and counterclockwise. As I have shown in water videos, smoke videos, and a couple of other videos that I can't even remember. For that, 
here in our so he's talking nonsense that this picture is the same as this when obviously this spins out clockwise and this is coming out counterclockwise and they meet here like a smoke ring human universe because we can't even intellectually conceptualize something that is super massive that has no magnitude but if I were to, and of course I can't take this very powerful magnet and dial it up several thousands of factors, it would literally visibly vanish from the... No, it wouldn't. Not unless the electricity crushed it down to nothing. Which is the only reason I believe there's something there. But him trying to say that this is the field that's coming out of that picture is incorrect. He still doesn't understand that this is the south field on the north field being repulsed by the underneath south field, so it points up into a hat. The Taurus is the real field, which is on one side, and then the torus of the other real field is on the other side. So you have a double torus that meets at the equator. But this field is a repulse field. It is not looking or comprehending the correctness of, of what it actually is. The visible universe. This now, I've shown uh, in many videos that there's two fields, and I've explained in my magnetic videos that there is a right hand and a left hand, the right hand grabs the left hand underneath, but the other left hand is repulsed by the left hand underneath, so it has to stick its hand in the air. There's a picture of Jesus. He's got his left hand down, and he's got his other hand up. It's a representation of a magnetic field. North and south on one side, south and north on the other. So north and south dominant fields meet at the inertial line. But that same south field pushes away the south field on the top. So what you get is a conical hat which I've shown on videos with ring magnets. Black hole at the center of the super powerful magnet would envelop the entirety of it, and it would literally vanish from the visible universe. So you would actually have a supermass. Well, in this case... Now, the way to prove this uh, is by the video that I'm about to put up. He thinks this is a vortex. A vortex starts off at point zero and gets wider. We've all seen a funnel. We've all drained the bathtub. It gets wider as it goes up. The video that I'm about to put up now shows that as you go down onto a magnet, that doesn't happen. And I've got a video to prove it. Gets wider. A vortex should not get wider at the bottom. All right, so in this video, I'm about to tell you that right here, um, the vortex starts at point zero and gets wider. Then you're going to hear exactly what I said about the south field. This was in uh, May 15th, 2020. Uh, it's got 490 views, which, you know, ah well. Um, so we're going to see uh, how far away I am from the magnet, and then we're going to look at what the vortex does. I've said it's spinning from the outside because it's being pushed up into a conical hat, so it should get wider as it goes down, if, it's, if I'm correct. Starts off at point zero, and then goes outwards. That's how a vortex works. A vortex should not get wider at the bottom. Let's see if our vortex, supposed vortex, gets wider. Okay, so... Now, I've got a slide there with a microscope flash glass, like something you put a drop of water and then you put this little square on top. Well, I use ferrofluid, then I turned over the microscope slide, so my ferrofluid cell is 0.2 of a millimeter thick. 0 0.2 millimeters thick. That's how close I am to the magnet. 0.2 millimeters away. So I'll show you the vortex, then I'm going to come up, and you're going to see the vortex get smaller. And as I go down, the vortex gets bigger. So, I'm going to push this down now, and the vortex gets bigger, come up, smaller, bigger down, up, smaller. So that alone proves that this is not a vortex. The vortex is created, this is the north face. On the north face is a north field which goes across the magnet, down and wraps into the south field at the inertial line. But on top of this, there's... So that means it's flat to the magnet because, as Theoria says, the spatial component gets less with the more powerful magnet, so it should be tighter to the magnet. Also, a south field. So the south field on the bottom is repelling the south field on the top. So it springs up and curls around and creates a vortex, which is why it gets smaller... Sorry, that's why it gets bigger the closer I get to the magnet. Now I'm going to put it on the magnet. Because it's spinning into the magnet from the outside of the magnet as it's being pushed up by a repulsing yeah, field. Yeah, 3D effect, which I'm going to try and show you Yeah, now. this is awesome. It looks like the hourglass nebula. So you just saw where that was. I'm not touching it. I'm trying to get the camera out. Look at that. 
Yeah, that's the kind of thing you get. So the things that I say are happening, even though it's only point I can two reproduce, of a millimeter. I can reproduce stellar this objects. Looks like there's at least All right, that's a enough centi- of that. It's in the magnet, it's not supermass. But we'd actually have a mass with absolutely no magnitude because the only thing that keeps anything in the... Okay, so there you go. Um, this is more of an expulsion. This is not so much a magnetic field as a magnetic picture of an expulsion. This is more like um, a sun flare. I've got many videos on sun flares where I've broken down each stage with stop motion to show you every frame. And it's like a conical hat with a face opening and then it twists up uh, into a conical hat. This is why in mythology, in Egyptian hats, they wore conical hats. This is where it came from. It's from energy. It was to show that you had a mighty brain. But it's been lost in translation. So yeah, this is not so much the magnetic field of a black hole. This is an outburst like a flare. But we're seeing the magnetic field of the flare because it's so massive. But it's actually showing us a very simple halo wave. Right hand and left hand. And all of them are vortices. Now... Don't get me wrong, if you look to any point of this black hole, it would look like that because it's a diatom surface. This means there seems to be holes everywhere, but there are not. You're looking at a flat screen that has cut through a a sphere. So there's always going to be a circular hole because it's a sphere made of holes. So every time you hit the sphere, you create a flat patch. This then shows you a hole. Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I follow the Christ and I'm showing you uh, right from wrong and good from bad. Thanks a lot. Bye.